Hello everyone! In this tutorial, we explain how to solve double integrals in polar coordinates. And here's our problem. Our problem is to compute the value of this integral where the region of integration, denoted by the capital D, is bounded by y is greater than or equal to 0 and the circles x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 and x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. The first step when solving the problems of this type is to sketch the integration region. So let's do that. Over here, let's first sketch the horizontal and vertical axes. Here is my vertical axis and here is my horizontal axis. This is x and this is y. Let's analyze the integration region D. This region is bounded by y greater than or equal to 0, and this means that our region is actually located in the upper half of the plane. That is, it's located over here. Next, it's bounded by the circles x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 and x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. But before we sketch these two circles, let's briefly recall the canonical form of the equation of a circle. The equation of a circle located at the origin, that is with the center at the origin and with the radius of r, has this form. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Over here, r is the radius of the circle. We can see that the radius of the first circle is equal to 1 and the radius of the second circle is equal to 2. And since y is greater than or equal to 0, we only need to sketch half of the circles, that is the circles in the upper plane. So let's do that. This is 1, or actually this is minus 1, this is 1. This is 1, this is 2 over here, this is minus 1, and this is minus 2. As well as here we have minus 2. Let's sketch the first circle, or the first half of the circle. Here it is. Over here I will try to sketch it nicely, however I believe if you use a pen and paper you will be able to do it in a much more nicer and accurate manner. Not bad. Here is my first circle with a radius of 1. And over here I'll put minus 1. Next, let's sketch the second circle. And for that purpose, let's change the color. For example, let's use a green color. And maybe here I overshoot it a little bit. It's 2, so it should be somehow here. And here's my second circle. Not bad. And here it is. Let's hope it will be good. Okay, not bad. Here, here, and here. So we have the points minus 2 and minus and plus 2. Good. Here is our region of integration, or the domain of integration D. The next step is to introduce polar coordinates. To do that, let's sketch another graph over here. Any point in the plane, for example this point A, has coordinates x and y. However, we can introduce new coordinates. And the polar coordinates represent this point A like this. First of all, we draw a line from the point A to the origin, and we draw a vector. The length of this vector is r, and this is our first polar coordinate, r. And the second polar coordinate is the angle that this vector r makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. And this angle is denoted by theta, or theta, however you like to pronounce this Greek symbol. Consequently, a has the polar coordinates, which are r and theta. 
Next, let's derive the mathematical relation between r and theta and x and y. Let's consider again our coordinate system with the point A. The coordinates of the point A are x, represented by this distance, and y, represented by this distance over here. This angle is an angle of 90 degrees, as well as this angle over here. By using basic trigonometry, we can see that x is actually r cosine theta. And we can see that y is r sine theta. And this is the relation between x, y, and r and theta. When solving this integral, we will have to substitute x and y by these values. Furthermore, we will have to substitute dA by the corresponding values, which we will, we will explain in the sequel. But before we do that, let's first analyze how to describe this region by using polar coordinates. Mathematically speaking, this region D over here is a set composed of points, and the points have coordinates R and theta in the polar coordinate system. And let's see the bounds for R and theta. Here is an arbitrary point. Here is R, this distance, and here is the angle theta, or theta, however you like to pronounce. We can obviously see that R goes from 1 to 2 for any fixed value of theta. For example, if we fix theta to be 90 degrees, R will go from here until here. That is, R goes from 1 to 2. So let's write it here, 1 and 2. These are the lower and upper bounds for R. How about theta? Well, if we fix R, we can see that theta goes from 0 degrees in radians to pi degrees in radians. And so let's write it over here. Theta is in the interval from 0 to pi. And that's it. Here's a brief summary of what we achieved so far. First of all, we developed a relationship between x and y and r and theta, and then we expressed the domain region of integration in the polar coordinates. The next step is to represent dA in polar coordinates. Let's learn how to do that. To do that, let's first sketch a coordinate system. Here it is. And in this coordinate system, Let's sketch one direction for the fixed angle theta. Here it is. Then let's slightly increase this angle theta for an infinitesimal value of d theta. And as the result, we will obtain a new direction. And here it is. And this increase in the angle is denoted by d theta. Let's write it down here. Good. Next. Let us take a value of r, for example, this value over here, and let me change the color such that you can nicely see what I'm drawing over here. Here is r, and let's draw a vector. Here it is. This is our r, and let's rotate this r for d theta. As the result, we will arrive here. And here's our rotated r. The length of r doesn't change. The tip of this vector describes a segment of a circle or an arc. And here it is. Now, let us assume that r is increased for very small value, that is for the infinitesimally small value of dr. 
and here's this infinitesimally small value dr, and let's rotate this r plus dr for the angle d theta, and as the result we will again describe a segment of a circle or an arc, and we will arrive here and this will be dr over here. Over here, we actually defined a very small region in the two-dimensional two plane. Next, let's enlarge this region and let's sketch it over here. Here it is. And over here, I'm going to exaggerate the dimensions of this region just for illustration purposes and for clarity. Here it is. The length of this edge is dr. The length of this edge is also dr. And since over here we have an arc of a circle or a segment of a circle, this length will be r multiplying d theta. Similarly, this length over here will be r plus dr multiplying d theta. Here's our first observation. Since dr is an infinitesimally small distance, we can safely assume that the length of this edge is actually r d theta. That is, we can simply ne neglect the product of dr d theta since these are two very small or infinitesimal variables. Good. So this is our first observation. Furthermore, since the angle d theta is very small, this r can be safely approximated by a straight line. And consequently, after these approximations, we can actually approximate this area over here as a rectangle. And here it is. Where the length of this edge or the side is r d theta and the height is simply dr. Now, the area of this rectangular segment is obviously dA is equal to r d theta multiplying dr. And this is the approximation and the expression for dA that we will use over here. After deriving the expression for dA, we can continue to solve our integral. And let's do that. i is equal to... First of all, let's express the bounds for theta. Theta goes from 0 to pi. Consequently, over here, we will write 0 to pi. Then, we need to substitute the bounds for r. r goes from 1 to 2. Then, over here, instead of x, we will write r cosine theta. So, we will, we will have 3 multiplying r cosine theta. Plus, we will have over here 4 multiplying y squared. And y is r sine theta. And if we square this, we will obtain r squared sine squared Theta. Close the parentheses and let's express dA by r d theta dr. So we have over here r multiplying d theta dr. Next, let's multiply everything by r. And as the result, we have our integral 0 to pi, integral from 1 to 2. And over here, what do we have? We have 3r squared cosine theta or theta plus 4r to the power 3 sine squared theta. Close the parentheses and we have d theta dr. And that's it. Here's our integral expression once again. And compared to previous expression, the only difference is that over here I changed the positions of dr and d theta. Namely, 
dr is now first and d theta is second. This is because we are first integrating with respect to r. It's easier to solve the problem like that. So let's integrate with respect to r. We have i is equal to, the limits for theta are from 0 to pi, and let's integrate with respect to r. When integrating with respect to r, we assume that theta is constant. So we will have 3 multiplying r to the power 3 divided by 3 cosine theta plus we will have 4 r to the power 4 divided by 4 sine squared theta and over here don't forget the parentheses and don't forget the bounds. The bounds are from 1 to 2. And over here, we are only left with d theta. Next, we can write this integral like this. It is an integral from 0 to pi. Over here, 3 and 3 can be cancelled. And we are left with r to the power 3. And let's immediately write the bounds, 1 to 2. And then we have cosine theta. Then we have plus over here, 4 and 4 can be cancelled, and we are only left with r to the power 4. Let's put the bounds from 1 to 2, multiplying sine squared theta. And let's close the parentheses, and let's write here d theta. Now, let's evaluate this term with these bounds, and let's do it over here r to the power 3, where the bounds 1 and 2 are given, is equal to 2 to the power 3 minus 1, and this is 8 minus 1, that is, this is equal to 7. Then, r to the power 4, where the bounds are 1 to 2, is actually equal to 2 to the power 4 minus 1, and this is equal to 16 minus 1, and this is equal to 15. And consequently, our integral becomes... 0 to pi. Over here, instead of the term, we can write 7 cosine theta. Then over here, we will have plus. Instead of this term, we will have 15 sine squared theta. And over here, don't forget the integration with respect to d theta. Let's analyze this integral. We can easily solve this integral over here since it's only an integral of cosine theta. However, we have an issue over here. We have sine squared theta. And to solve this integral, we need to transform this term as a function of sine 2 theta or cosine 2 theta. To do that, there is one very useful formula that goes like this. Sine squared theta is one half one minus cosine two theta and let's use this formula to transform this integral this integral can be separated and written like this the first integral is given over here it's simply seven cosine theta d theta. Then over here we will have 15 integral from 0 to pi and instead of sine squared theta we will simply write this term over here. Since we have one half over here, one half can go out and we will have 1 minus cosine 2 theta or theta d theta. And consequently, we actually obtain three integrals that we know how to solve. The first integral is 7, integral from 0 to pi, cosine theta d theta. The second one is 15 over 2. Let's nicely write this 15. 15 over 2. Integral 0 to pi d theta, 
and over here we will have minus 15 over 2 integral from 0 to pi cosine 2 theta or 2 theta d theta and that's it for the ease of computation let's split this integral into three parts let's call this part integral 1 let's call this part integral 2 and let's call this part integral 3 that is with this minus sign so we have integral is integral 1 plus integral 2 plus integral 3 and let's solve all of these integrals integral 1 is an integral 7 multiplying from 0 to pi cosine theta d theta this is actually equal to sine or better to say 7 multiplying sine theta from 0 to pi and this becomes 7 multiplying sine pi minus sine of 0 and let's see what is this equal to this is actually equal to 7 multiplying 0 minus 0 that is this is equal to 0 so i1 is 0 how about i2 let's compute it i2 is equal to 15 over 2 integral from 0 to pi d theta so this becomes 15 over 2 what do we have over here we have theta with the bounds from 0 to pi and this is equal to 15 over 2 pi good how about the third integral let's solve it the third integral is minus 15 over 2 integral from 0 to pi cosine 2 theta or 2 theta now over here we have d theta so how can we get rid of this d theta since we over here we have 2 theta we can either do substitution or we can do this trick we can write this integral like this minus 15 over 2 then I will have an integral cosine 2 theta or theta and over here I can write d of 2 theta namely if I take this operation that is differentiation this will be equal to 2 d theta and consequently over here I need to write 1 over 2 and don't forget the bounds the bounds are from 0 to pi so let's solve this integral now this is already in the standard form and this is the same procedure as doing substitution so we have minus 15 over 4 and over here we will have sine 2 theta where the bounds are from 0 to pi integral i3 becomes minus 15 over 4 and over here we will have sine of 2 pi minus sine of 2 multiplying 0 consequently we will have minus 15 over 4 and over here we will have 0 minus 0 and consequently we will have 0 over here so our integral i only becomes equal to i2 and write, let's write it here i is equal to i2 since i1 and i3 are 0 and this is equal to 15 over 2 pi and this that's it this is the solution of our problem it's not complicated